just going to talk about a little bit about uh, digital transformation from integrations perspective. We've been hearing about like digital transformation forever. I mean, it's been probably most widely used and abused term. Like um, when I first started, actually, it was we used to call it legacy modernization. It was a legacy migration to start with, and then it was like 2007 in my one of my earlier projects, and we moved to call things call. I didn't like the word migration because kind of like a very legacy term to it. So they want to call legacy modernization. And by 2020, 2014, it just this new term catch up. So, so all in all, the, the, what I want to talk about that is what I've seen in my experience or within Align when we are trying to go through our transformation and want to see it from integration's point of view only. So before I start, I want to give a little bit of background of what Align technology is. I don't know how many of you are familiar with. So Align is uh, it's an orthodontist medical device company that builds clear aligners. We also build um, scanners to get the 3D model of your teeth and everything else, like a new way of doing it. So it's one of the most advanced scanners, as well as we're the market lead for uh, Invisalign uh, clear aligners. Uh, these are some of the numbers. Um, you know, we have seven, more than seven, build, 7 million unique users, 2.2 billion in revenues. Uh, we have more than 160,000 doctors, and yeah, all of the details. Um, we are a global company. Um, it's all over the uh, all over the world. Euro, EMEA, North America, South America, APEC, China. It's all over the world. We have presence in all of these countries. We have our um, from different centers, from processing to um, manufacturing to uh, IT to R&D, we have it segregated all over the world. Um, again, that also kind of tells us that we have tons of different systems. Um, of course, that actually comes back to the whole thing about integration. Um, again, I'm going to just give you a little bit of more background about uh, what Align does uh, and how our what, we are, what, what is our priority and how it all comes together. Again, end of the day, digital transformation, if you talk about it, actually is about connecting to your customer. Meet their need, in, in increase agility, uh, to understand them, yada, yada, yada. So we, our customers are, again, doctors, first of all, because they are our customers. But then we also have a consumer who actually use our product. So our, all our needs are actually catered towards them, doctors, consumers, and then we also have our internal users. But that's a whole different story when it comes to the integration team, because in this case, our customers are actually the rest of the people within the organization. That's what we do. We don't connect to the end users directly. We are sitting in between, making sure that they can do their work. Uh, anyways, um, these are our customers. So that is all uh, basic uh, background of Align, what we do, what is our customers, what the customer base. So I just want to give a bit, you know, basic introduction before I start. Uh, again, just wanted to give a little bit of background before I start doing this, what we mean by digital transformation. And this is something that I just borrowed from internet. Nothing out of the ordinary. This is just a basic what digital transformation people talk about. Um, again, as I said, it's, it's, it's more, or more, more or less like any, a digital strategy for any organization. But all in all, what every organization does or ones from there is they want to meet the customer's demand in a faster way, in a better way, and then have a give a, their end users, their customer, a personalized experience. More, and, more or less, that's what digital transformation people want to do. That's what most of the people want to do. Um, of course, it's just easier said than done. There are a lot of things that goes behind the scene. So. Yeah, that's pretty much what we are, this kind of tie up to what we thought when it comes to digital, digital transformation and integration, from the integration's point of view, what we're looking for uh, on very high level. Again, I'm going to go a little bit about engineer, inter, integration engineering So uh, before I jump to the main topic. So when it comes to integration engineering, I think we have many different sessions since morning. We talk about a lot of different things. What is integration, be it... Uh, ESB, messaging, microservices, like Kafka and all of those, uh, streaming with Kafka and all of those, we talk about ESBs. What is integration? 
So a lot of the time when we talk about in integration, we end up talking only maybe a system integration or application integration, but integration can happen in so many different levels. It happens in the business levels with the tools like Dell, Boomi, and others. There are a lot of integration happens at the business level, integration happens on the application level, and also on the systems level. And I mean, to be honest with you, one of the earlier integration is actually you connecting to the database. So all in all, there are a lot of different places that integration is happening. So just wanted to make sure that, okay, I'm mean, pretty sure this is common for most of us when we talk about integration engineering, like we kind of deal with all of those at different point of time with the different teams. Um, with the, and again, we can actually put all of the yeah, cloud services there. So all of the newer cloud native ap approach that kind of, kind of make that cloud-based uh, integration is a bigger umbrella because now you have too many things within it itself. Be it cloud services, be it making cloud-native cloud applications talk to each other. And also the bigger challenge that we have seen is when we have, again, I'm pretty sure it's not unique to us, we have some one foot on the cloud, we still have a lot of presence in the on-prem, how are we gonna make them work? Because end of the day, the, the functionality, I mean, end, end users don't care, what, whether you, are, whether you are cloud native or you are, I mean, locally in your own data centers. They want some unified experience. How are you gonna make it work? So that's overall what I was thinking about what integration engineering is. It's about bringing everything together to give a unified experience to the end user. Make, make, it, make things like all your different uh, systems, applications, your business processes across multiple systems and Make it like, again, monolith is not a good word, but make it like they are part of one monolithic system that gives you a consistent and seamless experience. Um, yeah. Again, please stop me because I'm kind of going through fast because <laughs> it's a 30 minutes, so uh, if anybody has any questions, but otherwise we can circle back. So right now, so I want to see what we can, when it comes to digital transformation and digital integration, digital in integration, how they all come together, because we are all talk about, most of the time when we talk about digital transformation, we talk about like some marketing point of view, oh, we are talking caters towards the customers, um, you know, meet their need, whatever, whatever, but how does it all come back to integration? So if you see integration engineering, what integration engineering does, it's, about, it's all about bringing three things together, people, process, and technology. Now, we talk about integration in a generic term, but all in all, what it does, it kind of mash everything together and give you that whole experience that everybody can talk to everybody. Uh, of course, there are a lot of things goes behind securely. What we, I mean, since morning, we have multiple sessions that talk about that, how multiple like uh, microservices can talk to each other. Again, security is forefront of it. But at the same time, when we saw earlier, like integration means there are people component to it and process component to it, be it business level or others, how are you gonna bring all of them together? Now, a lot, lot of these tools, integration tools, be, be WSO2 AI or any other AI tool, they actually take care of a lot of this. Except the people portion, they actually take care of the process and technology point of view because they kind of put it together. It is not just about system level integrations, it's not about integration level, you know, or application level integration. So, from the digital, in, digital transformation point of view, what we saw is if we can bring all of them together, that will actually solve our problem. And then actually, that actually also helps us that we actually have a lot of different systems. Um, not everything is like, a lot of the time integration problem came out, it's not because they are a problem for a process or a technology, it's also people driven because culture is a big part of it. So, all in all, this is what our understanding was when we say that, okay, hey, how are we gonna achieve the digital transformation on a high level, theoretical point of view? Yes, bring people, process, and technology together. But that, that exactly what the definition of integration engineering also. So kind of going together on both of this. So that's what I feel like, okay, we are like, integration engineering give a very unique perspective on digital transformation. So what we have in Align, so Align is not unique to many other organizations. We have our, as I said, different systems. We have our ERPs, we have our CRM, we have our manufacturing, we have a lot of different custom applications, systems. We have a lot of APIs. 
because we are already on the journey for making API, like everybody has an API for everything. And we also have a couple of dinosaurs. Again, Align is not a really old company, but we still have some things that is like maybe 20 years old. Things that really, really works good. Uh, of course, that means you don't want to change it. Why change something that is not broken yet? At the same time, how are you going to make this work? Because at the, at, I mean, it's a, it's a constant evolution. We are having a lot of systems that has been built out in the cloud native way, but there are a lot of systems that are very working seamlessly without any issues um, forever. So how are we going to make those work? Not, not every one of them works consistently. And I think this is where WSO2 comes into picture. We are using WSO2 uh, currently as an API, um, our WSO2's API manager, and then WSO2's identity manager uh, product. Um, for us, uh, it was really, really helpful. Again, as I said, we, all of these systems has API, so of course, the first part was very easy because I can just make an API to API connectivity and it just works. But you also, we also see a lot of issues happen when we actually connect, try to connect to some of the uh, older systems. Maybe some of the systems those are where the inner functionality of those systems are not exposed as an API. So we're kind of like taking a lot of, uh, I would say, indirect approach to you know, bring them to the whole overall integration point of view. At the same time, as a part of digital transformation, we also had some issues about the approach. Are we going to have a centralized integration or a decentralized one? Because as, 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 as we're getting more and more cloud native, the, the approach that is going on with everybody's mind that we want to be a decentralized integration. But then it's easier said than done. I mean, we already talked like multiple sessions have. Uh, we had today, everybody's talking about the challenges that comes with decentralized integration. Um, so anyways, long story short, we are actually using WSO2 in that way. WSO2 was able to help us a lot. One of the examples I can give you is uh, for every API call, we actually, the backend systems or each one of them, they ex expect who the user is. But normally when we have an API to API call, it's a, like authorization model doesn't tell you that. It was not meant to give you all of the details. So, but normally the way you do it is like you just make it as a part of your contract between the caller and the calling system. But not every one of them can change at the same time. So this is one of the fields where WSO2 was able to help us a lot. We actually use, actually use JWT-based tokens. And uh, we were able to do some customization there, which was able to actually send this information consistently, which helps us not able to, you know, you know forcing, me, forcing this decision on every backend system that, okay, you have to change. We, they don't have to. Again, we eventually will have to, but at the same time, to make it integration work, uh, we were able to bypass some of those. Um, so that was, I think, the one, one of the big uh, problems for us for some time, and WS was able to solve it really, really fast. Uh, at the same time, we are actually slowly transforming some of the systems and making them more and more capable so that they actually expose more and more of their functionality. Um, so that is one way. And the other one is, like, of course, I mean, all of these API calls and everything else, API-based integrations, uh, we still have to have a really robust security. Now, how are we going to do that? Again, this is also WSO2 was able to help us because we are using WSO2 identity solution for that. And the good thing for us is WSO2's API management solution works very seamlessly with WSO2's identity solution. So they kind of go hand in hand. Though we, both of them together, we are actually able to build a really, really robust um, integration framework we still have the, the, the traditional integration framework as well, along with messaging and, in, and uh, I would say enterprise integrator, but mostly we are going more and more towards uh, API-based one. So we are able to use WSO2 in that way so that now we are able to connect all of these systems. And slowly, slowly, this, the, this dinosaur is getting smaller and smaller. And eventually, the, the idea was to remove it all together. Okay. Um, so some of the thing that we have taken so far is about uh, the whole, uh, the perspective that we have is about, uh, we are saying that, okay, um, sorry, it's, it should not be de-risk, it should be de-risk. Um, discover, design, deliver, and de-risk. 
those are the four approaches that we have taken from the engineering point of view. And we have taken some, uh, some of the, the, the known strategies, like, okay, we are trying to go with a uh, versioning strategy. Like, okay, now we have so many APIs. Everybody's talking to everybody with APIs. How are we gonna, how are we gonna keep a change in API without having everybody else ready to make the changes? Well, probably you don't. Keep the API immutable, make multiple version of it. Again, there is a, there is a fine balance to it because you might have a you know, situations where you have too many different APIs, too many of them, multiple different versions of it. Uh, again, as I said, uh, there's a balance. Every organization has to come up with their own um, like, uh, good balance to it, like find a good balance. Uh, we're also going at a different integration strategy. And we talk a little bit about it. So our strategy, as I said, we are trying to go more and more towards lightweight integration with decentralized strategy. At the same time, we are actually going more and more towards cloud, so kind of that works for us. At the same time, kind of uh, it also gives you some challenges with integrating with the legacy systems. Um, we are actually also using um, a couple of different deployment strategy. Again, all of this actually WSO2 kind of helps us with it because the product, some, all of these are built within the WSO2 product itself. So we are using uh, blue green deployment. We have a canary deployment. We have a feature flags. All of this, we are actually able to use different deployment strategy because whenever we are ready to make some change, not everybody is able to make the change. The biggest challenge that we see as an integration in a centralized integration was um, not everybody is going at the same pace. Now, all of a sudden, you have an application who wants to have a new features available or one of the backend systems. We feel like, okay, you know what? We have this API for, out for you, but we are ready to have a newer features or more information available to you. Now. We cannot just go ahead and say, okay, make this change, and now everybody else should have to change. Because everybody goes in a different pace, everybody has different priorities for it. So we are able to, using the versioning strategy as well as using some of this deployment strategy, we are able to you know, push out some of these changes in a very targeted way. Some, okay, make it a, like, different, people, different systems have different, uh, you know, uh, what is it, timeline they want to make the changes, we are able to cater towards their need without having to like, like going in a like a pace of the thing, like, like in a pace of the herd is the slowest of the slowest, uh, pace of the slowest member. It's not like that. We're able to actually speed up the process. There are still some issues, but at the, at the same time, I feel like uh, we're using the versioning strategies and the deployment strategies, we're able to actually push out some of these changes faster. End of the day, this is also what our digital transformation was about, you know, allow our changes to go faster, meet the customer de demand in an increased and an agile fashion. Uh, we're also taking a lot of approach, a lot of uh, initiative to break down our uh, like, uh, monolithic applications to a modular and microservices way. Like again, not monolith to microservices, we actually broke it down from like monolith to modular and then modular to microservices. And then we also use more and more automations. So again, it's, it's easier said than done. We actually take in a lot of these strategies and a lot of these steps to uh, go towards from like a very rigid, um, I would say very centralized uh, approach to integration to a less than centralized. I would say I mean, we are not completely decentralized yet. Uh, we are halfway through, but nonetheless, we actually took in the step where we are actually able to distribute the integration. It's, a, it's a decentralized. And it's getting a lightweight now. It wasn't uh, the traditional integration was a very much like a heavyweight approach. We have a very like a one table in the middle of a building. Everybody kind of connect to that, uh, the spoken hub model or whatever we call it. We are trying to change that. It's going so it is a challenge. But at the same time, I feel like some of these that we have taken, it was we are able to actually achieve some of the goals that we have. And one of the big thing was we were able to use some of this product which was actually catered to the needs for that. Because there are some product which is not necessarily um, like very flexible. So that kind of actually stops us. Uh, one of the things that somebody was saying, sorry, I forgot in our earlier slide that it was very important to select the right technology. And I believe that, okay, selecting some of the right technology was actually able to help us to, to be able to do some of this work that we have, to, we have done so far. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had. <laughs>